Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Flora Match Flow. In this tutorial, we will con we will cover computer requirements for running Flora Match Flow, adding your data to the Flora Match Flow interface, and give a brief explanation on what happens after you click start. The first thing we want to go over are the computer requirements. In order to successfully run Flora Match Flow, you'll need about 1 to 2 gigabytes of RAM per sample, depending on the length of your chromatographic run and complexity of the sample. The more cores you have, the faster the program will run. We recommend having at least 4 cores and 32 gigabytes of RAM for small datasets. Small datasets contain 20 samples or less for peak picking and 6 files or less for MSMS. We suggest this number of RAM because all files are loaded into memory in the version of MCMind deployed. The amount of RAM should be above the total gigabytes the converted vendor files take. To check this information on your computer, go to the search bar, enter settings, system, and scroll down to about. Here you'll see that my computer has 4 gigabytes of installed RAM. That means I will only be able to run a very small sample set. Note, if you have very large sample sets and not enough RAM, you can use your own peak picking software and still annotate your feature table using Floor Match Modular. We will begin with the data acquisition workflow that works best with Floor Match software. When acquiring data for all samples, depending on your experimental design, you only need to obtain data in full scan mode for negative polarity. Flurry Match Flow Peak Picking will work for data which has auto MSMS or other acquisition modes as well, as long as there are full scans acquired. That said, it is important to check that enough full scans are acquired across the peak for robust integration of the chromatographic peaks, and we recommend at least 10 to 15 scans across a peak. Currently, Flora Match Flow only works for, neg for negative mode as the libraries only contain M-H ions, but positive mode can also provide important PFAS information, which can be acquired in the same manner for future processing with Flora Match or manual review. In addition to your samples, if you can pool or give a ref reference sample for each group of samples and run each pool in MSMS mode using data dependent analysis, this is a good way to get broad coverage. If you do not have pools, you can run tandem mass spectrometry or MSMS on one to three representative samples from each sample group. In the case where all samples are highly unique, such as different aqueous firefighting foam formulations, then auto MSMS, also known as data dependent analysis, should be acquired for all samples individually. These will be used for identification purposes. The more samples you use for MSMS, the higher annotation coverage you will obtain, but the longer the software will take and potentially there will be more false positives. Ideally, you can also implement implement iterative exclusion, sometimes called auto-exclusion or other names depending on vendor, which drastically improves MSMS coverage. Using a representative sample, pooled sample, or a few representative samples or pooled samples. See link below for a description of intelligent acquisition approach approaches such as iterative exclusion, which can improve cover. Software is available at the Innovative Omics website. It is also highly recommended that you run at least three blanks. While you are making your extractions, go ahead and do three extraction blanks. These will be used to remove any noise that may come from your extraction procedure, the solvents and vessels, and your instrument. If you do not have extraction blanks, you can use solvent blanks, or in the solvent software you can deselect blank filtering, although this is not recommended, as people as background PFAS will remain in your final data set. If you choose to deselect blank fi filtering, we do suggest that you use your own algorithm after Flora Match Flow has completed to remove any impurities that can come from your mobile phases or the instrument lines. 
After your data acquisition is complete, you will need to rename your files if you do not use FloraMatch's naming conventions. FloraMatch flow will not run with your samples if they do not follow the correct naming convention. So after the FloraMatch flow folder has been downloaded, you want to open it, click the FloraMatch renaming tool, and the click to open lipidmatchrename.exe. This will open the renaming tool interface. If you want to retain the original names of your files, make sure you click this box to retain the original file names. And there is a character limit in the MSMS containing data for the file names. They cannot exceed 13 characters, so keep this in mind. Looking at the input area of the interface, you'll see several tabs across the top, starting with the DDMS2, blank, target, all ion fragmentation, and sample. Hovering over each one gives a little bit of information as to what that tab needs. Making sure that we select negative mode because Flora Much Flow only supports negative mode right now, go ahead and drag and drop the files containing MSMS data that you want to use for annotation into the DDMS2 tab. Note that FloraMatch also can handle targeted MSMS files exactly the same as data dependent files. Next, select the blank tab at the top of the interface and drag and drop those files. These names don't have to be under 13 characters, so there is no need to shorten them if they are too long. Clicking over to the target tab, these files will be a reference file or the pooled sample we discussed earlier that is representative of the sample grouping. The full scan data from these files will be used to find peaks and then these peaks will be extracted across all samples. This makes processing more rapid. Note, if all files are completely unique in their PFAS compositions, you'll want to run them separately in Flora Match Flow. An example of an experiment like this would be um, blood PFAS and aqueous firefighting foam PFAS. So let's drag and drop the pooled sample. The next step over is all ion fragmentation or data dependent analysis and this tab is optional. Right now it, cur it currently only works for thermo samples. Moving over to the sample tab, we will now add any remaining files for peaks to be extracted based on our representative pooled untargeted peak picking from the files upload prior. And that's the same one in the target tab. Note that for both targeted and samples, the same data files can be used as for MSMS, but two instances will be copied with different naming. Now we want to copy the files and change their names using the software. Hit Browse to navigate to the folder where we would like these files to be output. Click OK and go ahead and include a project name which will be appended to the files if you so desire. Remember to double check that the retain original file name is selected if you would like to retain those files. And remember that the MSMS files should be under 13 characters. Go ahead and click Rename Files. And it will run. Once you click Rename Files, they will begin generating in the output folder that you selected. You can open the folder and see the new naming system. You can tell the positive and negative polarity by the underscore pause or underscore neg. In this case, you'll only see underscore negative. 
um, since it only supports negative mode. And before the polarity, you'll see DDMS2, target, sample, or blank. These are the files that you'll need to run Flora Match Flow. If you need to reference the file's original names, they can be found in the Excel spreadsheet that is found in this file naming. This pop-up box tells you where to look to find that spreadsheet. And we can open that spreadsheet. Opening the spreadsheet, you'll see the original name in the first column and the renamed file in the second column. After making sure all files copied over, you can remove the original files to save disk space if desired. Now that your files are renamed, you are ready to run Flora Match Flow. After you've unzipped all files associated with Flora Match Flow, go ahead and open the Flora Match folder. Flora Match 2.4, then you want to open Flora Match Flow.bat. This will open the GUI. If you have any issues opening Flora Match Flow or any messages appear before it opens, be sure to consult the manual and troubleshooting documents, which can be found in the Flora Match Flow folder. Once you've gotten Flora Match Flow open, we need to name the project. Type into this field what you want the name of the project to be. Second, you'll select the output directory for where your project can be found. It's important to note that you should select an empty folder for this. You'll see this pop up and it's just telling us that it is creating a subfolder in that output directory. Hit OK and there is another folder that it is creating in that directory. OK. Next, we will drag and drop our MSMS data to this area. This box accepts targeted MSMS, auto MSMS, which is also called data dependent MSMS, and for thermo instruments, all ion fragmentation. Now let's add full scan negative mode files into this box. We will also add a few targeted samples here, and we want to make sure that we add three or more blanks. However, if you remember, my computer has low gigabytes of RAM, so we will not be adding the blanks. And, and because we will not be adding the blanks, we will unselect blank filtering, and this is not recommended. A few things to note here is that it is recommended that you only have two to 12 targeted samples. With each targeted sample, the processing time increases and the need for RAM, but so also will the number of features detected. We suggest three to five blanks, and you can add as many samples as you'd like. The peak areas of the targeted samples that you choose to run will also be included in this feature table, along with other samples. You'll see a warning for the files that are not correctly named, and we don't see any of those, and then you click Start. If you see this start button grayed out, it means that you don't have the files that you need or they're not in the right box or um, when I or that you don't have blanks. Since we have blank filtering selected, you would need to make sure you have blanks here um, and you see that it is grayed out. So when I unselect blank filtering, it tells the system that we do not need blanks here and it will allow me to start. So go ahead and click start. You'll see the code start to run on the left along with any error messages and as that runs you'll just see it go and then the bottom right panels will display the code for MZMine when it reaches that point. There's also this loading bar for code but this loading bar is deceptive because it only starts after our code initiates for annotation. This can take hours or even days for very large data sets. Very large data sets can be defined as having 20 plus samples and low RAM. Now you just wait. 
Wait time can range from a few hours to a few days. It all depends on how many samples you have in your project and especially how many targeted samples. It usually shouldn't take longer than three days for a 64 gigabyte RAM computer and 80 files and 80 or less files, but be aware that your computer will be tied up for some time while the software is running. For the sake of time in this tutorial, I have already completed this particular Florimatch flow and I can take you to the finished folder and show you what it will look like. When it's finished, you'll have these two folders, Lipid Match Run and Temp Work. And if you open Lipid Match Run, you'll see an output folder. Once you open the output folder, if you scroll down and see neg, neg ID'd, fin kmd scored .csv, you know that Match Flow has completed its run. This is the final file that will be generated and the final output file that you can review. Interpreting this output is covered in the next tutorial and you can access that with the link below. And like mentioned before, a troubleshooting document and written manual is provided with the software if you have any issues. These can be found in the original download mat, in the original download, in the Floramatch folder, Floramatch 2.4. You have Floramatch flow manual, and if you go to Floramatch modular, you'll see troubleshooting common issues at the bottom of that file as well. If troubles still arise, contact us at Innovative Omics. There's a link for that down below. For all inquiries regarding in-depth training, software setup, algorithms development, and research support, please contact us at InnovativeOmics.com or Jeremy Colmel at InnovativeOmics.com. And we'd like to thank the generous support of Agilent for providing expertise and resources, aiding in the development of floor match tutorials and software. Floormatch has been rigorously tested on multiple Agilent platforms as a part of this collaboration. Thank you so much.